What's going on my dudes one step here with a quick list of the top five hardest characters to learn in Mortal Kombat 1 Take it one step at a time Subscribe here for more fighting game content and let's get into these characters. Also, real quick, go ahead and pause your screen right here, my dudes, because this is going to be the universal language for all the inputs that we use so that everybody who's watching understands what we're saying. Also, as we get into the list, keep in mind there are two things that mainly that I'm considering when we're putting these characters in the top five hardest to learn. The first thing is how easy or, you know, hard are their combo strings and their specials to implement inside their gameplay? And two, how complex is their game plan and strategies to actually put into the fight? So in no particular order, they're first character on my list is Geras. I love Geras more now than I did in MK11, but he can be a bit tricky to really understand, especially in the beginning. I mean, he's got really good, easy combo that you totally could pull off, but I think the biggest complexity that he has is mainly two things. During the fight, so when it's fast paced, you're going back and forth, you're blocking, trying to worry about your opponent, you also gotta worry about how many time counters you have with your down back three, and if you gotta, because there's no like actual visual counter on the screen, so you gotta keep track of the fight, and then keep track of how many counters you got so right now i got one you know then you're halfway through the fight you got two then you do a combo here that gets you the final one and then once you have the three time counters then you have this really cool mechanic with your down back three again where you pause time you time stop your opponent you can do whatever you want from there so it's not that it's like super hard to understand but as big as a mechanic as it is in his gameplay you really got to worry about the time counters in the fight it's pretty fast paced you got to worry about all that and then execute that at the right time because they can block it so to implement that move inside your game play it could just be a lot but the biggest thing that really makes Garrus a bit complex is you have this back forward three move where you create this save kind of the save point i can rush my opponent do my thing as you see at that point in time it kind of teleports me back to my save point with the health you had before which is kind of cool so your game plan might be okay i'm gonna put it here and then i'm gonna really rush my opponent you know and then teleport me back and I'm good. But the really complex thing is when you enhance it, you're gonna see your big long animation. What happens in this animation, you can do an input. So let's say we do forward four, four. That clone that appears is gonna come out of the animation and do that input while we are allowed to do whatever input we wanna do, creating crazy mix-ups, crazy combos. You can make your clone do an overhead while you do a low. It's a lot of crazy things. So to show you a quick example, we're gonna do an overhead with our clone and then we're gonna go with a low. See that low overhead mix up? It creates a lot of pressure on your opponent, but it takes two bars to enhance it. And if you mess it up, like you don't do any inputs during that, you kind of waste it. So it's kind of expensive and it takes a lot to really get down and plan that move, plan that play. But man, is it really worth it? Especially once you get it down. You got to control his projectile with far closer mid. You just got a couple things that, especially for a beginner or a new player, can be pretty complex in the beginning. Is he worth the practice? Absolutely. Also guys, real quick, let me state that just because a character is hard to learn, does not automatically make them, you know, an amazing character or a really bad character. It simply means that from the get-go, from the beginning, they're a bit harder to understand and pick up and get the ball rolling with. They might take more than a couple hours of practice mode with, and that's totally okay. Again, they're just a bit hard to pick up right from the get-go. But I believe it's all about the player behind the controller that makes them a great character. Next on my list of the hardest characters to learn, especially from the beginning, is Kenshi. As Kenshi's a fan favorite, a lot of people lean towards Kenshi and soon realize, oh, he's a bit harder than I thought. I mean, he's got normal combos, normal, normal, and whatever that's all cool and fun but the big thing that makes Kenshi hard to learn is his sento stance so when you bring out sento you have sento with you you don't have any cameo to use by the way it's draining your cameo meter and while we have sento out sento will follow us back and forth and sento has his own normals such as one See how we do move, but Sento doesn't move as well. We can jump over our opponent and then entrap our opponent. So now they gotta worry about Sento and Kenshi. You see these moves where he's, he's fighting two people. And not only does Sento have his own normals, you also have other combos you can do with Sento out. So normally Kenshi has all these, com you know, these awesome fun combo strings. And then you have different combo strings when Sento is out. Kenshi has his own aerial combo strings and then aerial combo strings when Sento's out. Same with the specials, that your specials change whether Sento's out or not. So essentially you really Really have to learn not only one but two characters and then you have to learn how to play those two characters at the same time he's a stance slash puppet character and that can be really difficult for most players especially from the beginning trying to create the mix-ups the lows the overhead the sento combos i mean the pressure can be insane especially with sento out of there because again you can trap your opponent you can sandwich them and now they got to fight both you and sento 
but it's definitely not for the faint of heart. It's, in my opinion, it can be pretty difficult to pick up, especially from the beginning. But if you're willing to put the time into it, man, Kenshi is an absolute menace. The next character on my list of the hardest characters to learn in Mortal Kombat 1 is gonna be Havoc for a couple reasons. The biggest ones is he's just a bit slower, and that's not a bad thing, but what that means for you as a player is you literally have to plan out your plays a bit more methodically than you might for a faster paced character like Scorpion, Liu Kang, Kung Lao, you get it. His combo strings are a bit harder to really put together, especially when you add into his special, because his specials are kind of slow. We have our back forward three, and you see how slow that is. It tracks our opponent, that's cool and all, and we have our back forward one as well, but that projectile changes properties depending on how close you are to your opponent. It, these are just things that as a new player you might have a hard time keeping track of you might think he's a really bad character I don't think Havoc's bad at all. I think he's great But if you pick him up from the beginning, you might be like, why is that so slow? What the freak's going on? Why, why can't I do anything? He's so slow. Why, why is that so slow to really piece together his combos and his strings? It just takes a bit more practice than most characters. He's not necessarily the most complex character ever He just takes a bit more time than most because he's a bit slower especially in the beginning But let me know your thoughts on Havoc down below do you like him? Do you think it's hard to learn? And then are your thoughts? How do you have a hard to learn character list without having Shang Tsung? Again, he's not a bad character. I actually love Shang Tsung, but especially in the beginning, he can be a bit hard to learn because you got to worry about young Shang Tsung and then you got to worry about old Shang Tsung. So first of all, that's two different characters and their combo strings, though the inputs are the same, the outcome is different. So for an example, as young Shang Tsung, we have our fireballs that go forward. We have one, then we have two, we have three. And then you switch to old Shang Tsung and your fireballs are now different. They come from the ground. Your air fireballs are also different. You see the difference in like the movesets. So you're essentially learning two different characters at the same time and then fighting as those two characters. And the crazy thing is you can change forms mid combo and then continue the combo as old Shang Tsung or vice versa. So you're thinking about how do I do this combo? How do I execute this combo? And then also how do I change, but how do I change, you know, young to old inside the combo? So that way when I come out of the combo, I'm, I'm kind of the, the form that I want to be in because my next game game plan has to be young Shang Tsung so I gotta make sure that during a combo I switch and then I'll switch again and then do my fireball but whatever your game plan is you just gotta worry about okay two different forms equals two different move sets and again that can be a lot especially in the beginning for new players and not only that but one of Shang Tsung's staple moves is morphing into your opponent so now I now I am smoke and the reason why you really want to do this because if you enhance that move you now do more damage as smoke than smoke normally would so Shang Tsung players really benefit of having at least a basic understanding of the entire roster so that way no matter who you fight you can actually change into your opponent and then okay I'm gonna mirror match you now, but I'm also gonna do more damage. So you're essentially playing the entire roster at the same time while playing two characters, young Shang Tsung and old Shang Tsung doing that inside of combos and fireball on it, then going to your opponent. It can just be a lot, especially when there's a, like, you know, very fast paced match going on. It's, a, it's, it's neck and neck, you're worried about what's my next play. You gotta worry about what what form do I wanna be in? What cameo do I wanna have? What character am I gonna morph into if I wanna morph into him? There's a lot of micro decisions happening when playing Shang Tsung and it can be a lot on your mental stack, especially when you're just first learning a character. I love him, but he can be a lot. I'm probably gonna get some smack for this in the comments, but Rain is probably one of the harder characters to learn, especially from the beginning. For the same reason kind of Havoc is, like, he's more of a set play character. You know, you got your traps to worry about. And then as you set that up, you know, let's say they're frozen with your cameo, you set that trap up then you go for the overhead attack so he, rather than go in full force be aggressive like some characters might like smoke or scorpion or others rain likes to set things up he likes to set his opponent up for failure so he'll set the trap down for a low if they block that he's going for the overhead he's got so many things and so many tools that are kind of meant to be away from your opponent again we have our trap we also have our down down up electric ball and that can go full screen you're setting up portals like this you can put them in the air like this and then okay i'm in trouble i'm gonna go through my portal and that's a bit, you know, weird because some characters like Raiden have an automatic teleport. But the cool thing about Raiden is you can decide where you're gonna teleport by setting your portals up, you know, beforehand. You can already see that there's a lot of set plays going on here with our portals, with our low traps, with our electric ball move here. If your opponent's zoning you out, you can throw out the water shield, meter burn that to walk with it. He's just got some really good tools that are really not meant to be in your opponent's face. And a lot of people want to, you know, they want to be in their opponent's face. But Raiden's like, nah, let me be away. I mean, I'll fight you if I have to but I'm gonna I'm gonna set my traps I'm gonna do my you know my thunderball move stuff like that he's a really fun character but a lot of new players might have a hard time grasping his game plan his strategies especially in the beginning just because of how his specials and his combo strings really work he's not Shang 
consume complex, but he can be a bit hard in the beginning. But man, he's got that drip, dude. If you want to learn these characters and have a really good foundation on how to play them, check out my guides on these characters in the description below. Let me know what characters you think are hard to learn in Mortal Kombat 1. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Subscribe here for more Mortal Kombat content. Take it one step at a time.